Hi there. Today's project, a square bowl. It's cherry with walnut strips put into it. Now the trick to turning something square is that a great deal of the time your tool is in air. It's not being supported by the wood. It makes it a little difficult to do a clean cut. One of the tricks is to turn it as fast as you can. The faster it's revolving, the less time your tool is in air. So let's take a look at how I did this. See what you think. I start by ripping this cherry blank. I ripped it twice to make sure that it would be exactly the same dimension on both sides. After gluing a strip of walnut between the two pieces of cherry, I cross cut it twice, not trying for any sort of symmetry. After gluing in those two pieces of walnut, I found the center of the blank and then marked it with a scratch all. I'd like to offer a little tip. If you use a fence with your drill press and need to make holes the same distance from the fence on each one, once you tighten that fence down, moving it across will put the next hole the same distance. Now that's pretty obvious. What may not be obvious is something that I saw someone else doing in a video. He was taking his fence and slowly moving it up and testing and moving it back and testing, trying to find that spot. Well, if you've already got a divot there and you're using a brad point bit, just bring it down into the divot, hold it there, bring your fence up, and when you tighten it, it's already going to be calibrated for where you want it to be. Now I want to drill a 3 8 inch hole and I've marked it with masking tape to make sure I get to the depth I want. And this is so I can use my woodworm screw on the lathe. And it's ready to go. The blank is mounted on a woodworm screw. I'm going to be turning it at about 2000 RPM. When I get out to the end here, I'll be spending more time cutting air than I will wood. So the faster it's turning, the better chance I have of getting a clean cut. Now the first thing I'm going to do is mark for the tenon that I'm going to use to reverse chuck it onto the four jaw chuck. I have my dividers set to the diameter I want and I will just scribe that on there. To do so I will line up the left leg where the outside is of that circle and match up the right leg so it's set to the right size. You have to be very careful not to let the right leg dig into the wood or it will flip up and possibly stick you real good. Not something you'd want to try.
Now I will use the parting tool to define the tenon. going to come out about one-third and make a mark so I can see what I'm doing. I want to make an OG shape on this. Got some lines here. I assume those are hesitation lines. Instead of going straight through with a cut, I believe I'm hesitating a little bit as I go around. I gotta try to be a little smoother. I'm 
try to use a shear cut to straighten this out a little bit. If I turn the flute on its side like this, I'll be scraping. But if I can come up a little more and do it this way, then I'll be getting a cutting action, which should give me a smoother, cleaner cut. Now I want to round this over in the opposite direction, more of a bead than the cove is here, to try to give me that OG look. If you're looking at it in this view, you should be able to see it start to show up. It's starting there, I need to blend it in right here, I have a ridge. beginning to look like I want it to look. I don't want a flat spot in here. That will make it look like it's just squatting down on itself. I want it to look like it's lifting up. Alright, I'm going to sand that and then I'll be back. Sanding this can be a little tricky. Having these wings come around while it's running is a little hard on the fingers when you're trying to sand it. So what I do is I sand each of these edges. Go all the way around, sand them very well. The trick here is to not go over the edge. I want to keep that crisp edge there. After I've done each of these edges, I come to the corners and I do them always sanding with the grain. Do each one of them till all four of them are finished. Then I turn the thing on, turn on the lathe and I sand in here like this. I'll give you a quick demonstration. Right. 
So I'm going to continue sanding this as I've done that. I'm going to sand up to 400 grit. Then I'm going to put on a solution of Zinzer Seal Coat 50-50 with methyl hydrate. Usually you would use denatured alcohol, but I couldn't find any and methyl hydrate works just fine. So I'll finish sanding it and I'll put the coat on. I have Zinser Seal Coat mixed 50-50 with methyl hydrate. I'm going to apply that. Soaks in quite quickly and dries fairly quickly too. It'll be dry in 10 minutes or so. I like to mix the seal coat with methyl hydrate or denatured alcohol. It thins it out and lets it soak in a bit better. The seal coat is dry now and it has raised the grain just very, very slightly. I can just feel a roughness there where it was very smooth before. I'm just going to go over it very lightly with 4 hot steel wool. Pretty much any liquid will raise the grain. I've heard people say that alcohol won't, but I've had occasion to try alcohol and it has raised the grain. I think pretty much any liquid will just do that. That's got it back nice and smooth now. I'm going to reverse this now into the chuck and turn the inside of the bowl. When mounting it into the jaws, reversing it, I like to push on the hole where the woodworm screw was because it's centered. If I try pushing it in one side or the other and have more weight on one side than the other, it will probably not be true. That looks pretty good right there. I haven't decided yet if I want to start tapering it right from the outside of the wings or if I want to leave a flat spot. So I'm going to draw a circle and I'll just start turning from there. See what I think of it as I go along. I'll leave the tail stock up there for a little while using the live center to support it just to be sure. I prefer to turn and leave this stepped a little bit, leave most of the meat on the inside while I finish off the outside. That gives support. As soon as you take that away, it's like breaking an elastic band and there's no support in there anymore.
Actually, I think I like the looks. I'm just going to leave that flat. Time to pull away the tail stock and concentrate on very thin, small cuts. Don't want to try to hog out too much because it probably popped this right out of the jaws. I'm going to switch to my quarter inch bowl gouts to try to get a finishing cut in here. I've ground away the bottom of the bevel just to try to relieve it so it's not riding on the wood as I go around because that can leave marks. Let's see what I can do here. Oh yeah, that did a nice cut. I like the quarter inch gouge for a finishing cut. As long as it's nice and sharp, it does a good job. I'm going to leave it fairly thick on the bottom. I like the shape and I think I'll stick with it the way it is, sand it and I'll be back. While this was still mounted on the woodworm screw I had put a little mark in the very center so I could use the tailstock later to push this in while I tightened up the coal jaws. Now I can move the tailstock out of the way bring my tool rest in and clean up the bottom. I'm going to sand the bottom now 
Then I'm going to drill a 15 16 inch recess to put my logo coin in. I'll put a couple of grooves in here and then I will sign and date it. After that's all finished, I'm going to put on Minwax Wipe On Poly for the finish. And that's another project complete. Hope you enjoyed this. Let me know what you think. Any tips you want to offer me, I'm always glad to take. Well, don't forget to subscribe. Have a great day in your shop and always be safe. Thanks for watching. Take care now.